Shifting focus now, the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit to Saudi Arabia last week may not have been that fruitful for Washington. This, since Saudi seems to be cozying up to China to strengthen bilateral and economic ties. This comes days after Blinken's visit to Riyadh to stabilize the strained relationship between Washington and Riyadh. Saudi Arabia's diplomatic relations with the United States previously went through a rough patch when U.S. intelligence claimed that the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman approved the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi, who was a fierce critic of his government. At the Saudi-China business conference on Sunday, Saudi Minister of Energy Prince Abdulaziz had expressed that Riyadh will go wherever there is business opportunity. Earlier in March, Saudi's state oil giant Saudi Aramco signed two major deals with China. It raised multi-billion dollar investments and became China's biggest provider of crude oil. In 2022, the volume of trade exchanged between Riyadh and Beijing reached a record $106 billion. At the conference, Saudi foreign ministers said that China is Arab world's largest trading partner. Earlier last week at a press conference with Antony Blinken, the foreign minister had said although Saudi is always open to having dialogue with friends, it never responds to pressure. Now, last year, Chinese President Xi Jinping had expressed his desire to purchase oil from Saudi in Chinese yuan, a move that could weaken the U.S. dollar's global dominance in the long run. Saudi hopes that in the coming years, Chinese investors will explore and find more opportunities for further investments in the Arab world. It also hopes to ratify the free trade deal between China and Saudi Arabia that has been ongoing since 2004. Now for more on this, we were earlier joined from Washington DC by retired Colonel Rich Alzena, a renowned geopolitical analyst with additional details on the story. Take a look. Well, I, I don't think this is so much about China as it is about the nature of the international system and the regional system uh, in the Middle East. Uh, the reality of multipolarity is that everyone needs to deal with everyone. We're not dealing with the Cold War paradigm anymore, where it's the U.S. against the Soviet Union or even the post-Cold War uh, paradigm of the last 20 years in which it's the U.S. against the axis of evil. The truth is that we have multiple partners and multiple competitors in every region of the world, in East Asia and South Asia and uh, in the Middle East as well. So when uh, President Biden came in saying that uh, uh, Mohammed bin Salman Saudi Arabia was a pariah and that we were going to use unilateral power to marginalize him and change his behavior, this was sort of the, an echo of the uh, previous era in which the United States had unilateral power and the, the ability to just sort of uh, peremptorily say that a country should do X or Y. That's not the world we're in right now. The world we're in is very competitive. It's multi-axial. Saudi Arabia is a, a, a premium case of this in which not just this year, but even last year when they were uh, ignoring Biden's uh, requests to increase oil production to meet U.S. Uh, price uh, and targets, and they said, no, we're not going to do that. So the, we saw again with uh, the Iran-Saudi reconciliation or rapprochement that was uh, brokered by Beijing. And now this latest meeting in which the, the Saudi officials say, yes, we, you know, we're, we're not taking sides in this. A perfect example of the fact that Saudi Arabia, like many countries in the region, has adapted to multipolarity. The question is whether the United States has or not. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.